Hello, my name is Robbie, and I'm gonna show you how to take this fork, turn it into a necklace, but it's gonna be an elephant necklace. I started making these necklaces about six years ago. I was inspired by a picture that I had seen on my wife's Pinterest. I ended up going to a blacksmith's house and asked him if he could help me with these necklaces because I didn't have the equipment I thought to get it accomplished. Turns out I could have simply made these in my own house with the tools that I already had and a quick trick to Hobby Lobby. The forks we're using today actually came out of a house fire. It was our house. Most of the things inside were completely destroyed. I made a lot of these over the past couple years, mostly giving them away as gifts. Uh, I even made these little elephant earrings out of these teeny little forks. I guess they'd be little hors d'oeuvre forks or lobster forks. All right. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is get this fork flattened out. Using this flat solid surface I will be able to more easily smash this fork. Next, draw your elephant. So I drew this in black sharpie and I know it's kind of hard to see because of the charred fork but the first thing we're going to do is cut off the legs here. To do that I'm going to be using these cold chisels. You can use a hacksaw or an angle grinder or whatever you can think of that will cut through metal but uh, my favorite thing to use are these cold chisels. It's not really cutting as more as it is pinching off the legs. This is where the hard steel plate comes in handy. Now we obviously need to pinch off the handle right here, but we want to wait. We want to use this handle to our advantage. We can hold on to it while we're shaping the trunk and getting different bins and polishing it and cleaning it up. It'll be nice to have this handle on there to hold on to. I'm going to go ahead and drill out the eye. And this will go a lot better for you if you select a drill bit that's rated to go through metal. After drilling out the eyes, I come back with a larger diameter drill bit and countersink the holes just for a little added detail. The next hole that we have to drill is for the ring that our cord will slip through. This fork seemed to be pretty hard, so I added a little bit of oil to keep my drill bit from burning up. Time to do the trunk. Now we're gonna twist the trunk before we actually start bending it. And you can do that by grabbing it with two sets of pliers and twisting the trunk, or what I've done here is I've made a slice in a two by four. If the two by four is screwed down to a bench, I can grab the trunk with some pliers and twist it. But I have a vise, so that's what I'm gonna use. Most vices and pliers have sharp teeth to help grip material better to prevent slipping. But in this case, we wanna keep from damaging the fork. So you can either use a t-shirt rag, or in my case, I'm using a piece of leather to help protect um, the fork from the teeth of the vise. Now that the trunk is twisted, we can begin bending the trunk into the desired shape. This step, you can try bending the trunk with needle nose pliers. It leaves a little bit more of a jagged edge. What I'm gonna be using is a spud wrench locked into a vise, using it as an anvil. A short section of video was lost along the way, but I put two bends in this fork, giving it the appearance of the letter S, and the second bend 
I vice gripped in a pair of needle nose pliers and beat the trunk around it. And there you have it. Now this fork looks very similar to the first one I made for my wife. And her name is Stephanie. I've been trying to decide whether or not to clean this up and bring it to a polish or just leave it this coal black kind of color. And I think I've gone with leaving it black. So I'm just gonna rinse this off with some Dawn and water. Clean up a few of these sharp edges. To do this, you can either use a file, some sandpaper, an electric sander, orbital sander. Uh, I have a bench top grinder, so this is what we'll be using. At this point, it's fine to remove the handle. For the cord, I'm gonna go with this leather braided. Most of my jewelry making pieces came from Hobby Lobby. I get these rings and um, different uh, clasps. I'm gonna go with this black ring here. several variations of these crimps that go on the end of the cord that you can connect the clasps to. There's one. Um, they've got some smaller versions. Um, here's a spring version that I really like. And you just pinch down the last coil of the spring down onto your cord. But this won't fit over my braided cord, so I'm going with this crimp. And there you have it. Elephant fork necklace. This is the original one, the first one I ever made. I made it for my wife Stephanie and it is actually made out of sterling silver. I paid $80 for this fork at an antique shop. Never again. Just use one out of the drawer. Now the silver fork was very easy to bend. Really easy to manipulate. It's a soft metal. 
if you get a silver plated fork or an expensive set of forks, they're just try to choose one that's thin. The thinner, the cheaper, the better. It's easier to manipulate the trunk. You can shape it in more detail. So cheaper, thinner, that's the way to go in selecting your fork. Hope you enjoyed the video. What's that? No, I haven't seen your earrings. <laughs>